Hey guys, welcome to Home Bar Pro. So today I'm going to be making the Jungle Bird cocktail from the Aviary Bar in uh, Kuala Lumpur, um, the Hilton Hotel there. This is one of the last tiki cocktails we made before craft cocktails sort of disappeared and disco came into prominence. So uh, this is kind of a Negroni riff, um, replacing the sweet vermouth with fruit juices. So. Let's get into it. So um, first we're gonna do two ounces of pineapple juice. Now fresh is always best and if you don't have a juicer at home and if you're not juicing a ton for a big batch like you just want to make one cocktail, um, the best way I found is just to muddle some fresh pineapple chunks. So I'm just gonna dump those into a container. I'm just using like a cocktail shaker. You can use a bowl, any sort of glass will do. And then I'm basically just muddling this and I'm gonna decant off the juice. I'm just gonna strain the, the juice and see if we get two ounces like we're looking for. Just gonna press that pulp into the strainer. Squeeze out every last drop. You'll notice that the pineapple juice gets pretty pretty frothy and that actually will show up later in the drink. Anytime you shake pineapple juice in a cocktail it has a nice froth to it and I think the, the fresh stuff is just a little bit better than the cans. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this. When you're looking at a cocktail recipe in a book or online, usually they're gonna list the most prominent ingredient first, and it's usually like the name brand, like the spirit in most cases, so the rum. Uh, I like to make them sort of in the reverse order and start with the, the smallest, most uh, inexpensive ingredients. This is really important when you're behind a professional bar, but at home, I think it's just as important because, what the hell is all that? Is it scary Halloween stuff? So at home, I think starting with the cheapest ingredient first uh, is always a good idea as well because if you screw up, if you put too much of something, you can always toss it out and you're not tossing out the uh, expensive booze. So first, I'm going to add the uh, two ounces of freshly squeezed pineapple juice to my, um, my shaking tin here. And then this drink also calls for a, a rich... Demerara uh, syrup. I actually use turbinado sugar to make this syrup in a ratio of two parts sugar to one part water by weight. Um, traditionally, this would be a Demerara syrup, but the turbinado sugar, which is the same stuff as like, you ever seen the store, the uh, sugar in the raw, that's gonna be a lot easier to find. So that's what I was able to find. And I'm gonna take Campari, which is a nice bitter aperitivo. Um, traditionally, you know, most common in, in a Negroni, and like I said, this is kind of a, a tropical Negroni. I'm going to measure three quarters of an ounce. Into the mixing tin. And then lastly, you're going to want a nice dark um, black rum, dark aged Demerara rum. Um, so this is going to give you a nice sort of molasses note and some funk that's gonna go really well with the bitter notes in the Campari. This one happens to be the Hamilton 86. Uh, it's 86 proof from Guyana. Is that how you say that? Guyana? The country? I don't right. wanna be your assistant, like on camera. I'm not, I'm not Jamie, young Jamie from Joe Rogan. I like that. You are Jamie, you are young. <laughs> well, All right, so we're going with the Hamilton 86 today. And I'm going to measure one and a half ounces of this guy. And that's it. Four ingredients. Oh, that's not it. Almost forgot. This would be really sweet at this point. So uh, there's also lime juice in this cocktail. So it's not just pineapple juice, it's pineapple and lime. I'm just gonna have this lime and before I juice it I'm just gonna slice off a nice little lime wheel and uh, give it a notch 
And when you notch a line wheel, it's good to go in the middle of the segment. It gives it a little bit more sturdiness. It's a pretty thin line wheel. I think I'm going to cut one a little bit thicker. Because we're going to be perching this on the rim of the glass for a garnish. And so having a little bit thicker, it's going to be a little bit sturdier. And then, just using a juicer, you're going to juice half ounce of lime, which in this case was exactly uh, half a lime. All right, get this out of the way. Okay, so then all that's left to do is grab your glass. I'm going to use a Collins or highball glass for this. And I'm just going to fill that up with ice. Like that. And then in your shaker, I'm going to add ice as well. Take your big side of your shaking tin and throw it on there and give it a good hard shake. Got that really nice foam. You can you can actually hear it. All right, so we need a strainer. Get yourself a Hawthorne strainer. Throw it on there. Uh, because there's no like pulp or anything, we already strained the pineapple juice. I'm just gonna strain this straight into the glass. If there was some pulp or herbs or something to worry about, maybe I would um, consider fine straining it, but. All right, it's a little short. This recipe clearly was designed for a slightly smaller glass. Well, so this, by the way, is why you don't want to like order a cocktail with less ice because in a proper bar where they're making proper cocktails like this, the drink has all been measured ahead of time. It's all predetermined. So if I take all the ice out of here, you'll see that it only fills half the glass. So um, you're not gonna get more drink by asking for less ice. Uh, maybe if it was just a highball, you might get more soda, but no one's gonna give you free booze. Um, so um, that, that wash line is not great, but I'm, I should have some like crushed ice on top of it, but I'm just gonna go with that. So uh, for a garnish, you're just going to give it a lime wheel and then Tuck two pineapple fronds, and since you juice the pineapple fresh, it should be no problem for you to have these on hand. So just do the pineapple fronds with the lime wheel. And there is the jungle bird. So I'm gonna give this a taste. really bitter from the Campari and the, the pineapple actually kind of adds to that. It's got a nice acidity and that that classic just like I think it's a combination of the the turbinado syrup as well as the the Hamilton rum just really hitting hard with that sort of bitter molasses note that complements the Campari and it instantly just like transports me to um, a tiki bar. Your favorite tiki bar insert here. It's just those flavors that you associate with tiki. Um, so quite excellent. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish this and I will see you guys in the next one.